it's hard to it's hard to get up. Hey, it's Wednesday. Not Wednesday. More about that later. Hello. All right. We watched Netflix's Wednesday. And boy, am I exhausted. It is described as a comedy. I didn't laugh. Who laughed? Who laughed? Raise your hand if you laughed. You didn't. I didn't. <laughs> the thing about the Adams family and the whole narrative behind the Adams family is that they are a wonderfully absurd, educated, funny, spooky, kooky, altogether ooky. Adam's family is one of the most well-known American families yeah. in history. Yeah. So when you make a show about one of their characters, you have to realize that you are telling, retelling a story of a very popular family that has a place in our hearts, that yeah. holds a place in our gothic hearts. If you think Adam's family, what do you think about jokes? Morbid jokes about mortality. They don't take themselves too seriously. They love each other and they are somewhat outcasts of society, but they don't hate society. They're very much a part of it. They're not antisocial. They're they have house. a lot of friends. They're happy to make new friends. They love each other very much. So this, they're not depressed, misanthropical f beings who want to die. Their house is a museum where people come and see them. The Adams family since the 30s has been a symbol for being different, for celebrating your own identity, for not being a slave of society. Oddness is embraced. Oddness yes. is embraced. Anti-establishment, yes, but not in a criminal way. And every Adams family the comic, the television show, the movies, the remakes, the animated remakes, they were all creepy and kooky. And then mm. Wednesday comes along with her shitty attitude. <laughs> so shitty. And then everything is all serious now. I mean, I can definitely see that s some things in the Adams family were a bit, w would not happen today. That would that would absolutely be cut out, and 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 that's all right. Like, that's okay. It changed because also the the one from the sixties and the one in the nineties very different, very mm -hmm. different, different jokes. They go further mm -hmm. in a sex lot of jokes. Also, a lot of ex very sexual jokes, which I personally appreciate it, but mm -hmm. I understand. Okay, change. But I would have liked to see the jokes that we would make now. Yeah. What are the jokes that would happen now in the Adams family? And there were just no jokes. Like that's I, I a, love, that's the progression. No jokes. No jokes now. I loved the the kinky like sadist masochist like ooh hot coals chains whips oh put me on the the stretcher bar oh not tonight ooh <laughs> funny. Not even far, there weren't even fart jokes, Flodgy. And I feel one. like fart jokes are always safe, and they didn't Universal. even want to do that. She, honestly, Morticia looked Christian. <laughs> Morticia looked like a rich Christian woman. Yes, like an uptight Christian woman. But also, I think you can make a good spin-off of Wednesday. I think it could be hilarious yeah. to show uh, Wednesday in her puberty. Like, oh my god, what Wednesday become hits her puberty. What's gonna happen with that when she's gonna like boys? What would it look like when Wednesday likes boys? Mm -hmm. What does her fa how does her family guide her through that process? She's gonna rebel against her family. What does it look like when Wednesday rebels against the family who accepts everything about her? Is she gonna mm -hmm. rebel against the acceptance? I think you can make a very funny show about that with just as many jokes. Mm -hmm. You can keep the you can still keep the family family value because Adam's family is also about fam family values. Mm -hmm. Fester seemed creepy. Like this Fester because the Fester in the other movies are 
I love the Fester in the other movies. He's as a non-realistic character. As a non-realistic uncle. Because Fester, as a real realistic character, would Oh, so <laughs> problematic. <laughs> Is a very disabled person, honestly. Yeah. Like mentally challenged. I think he has an IQ of forty. Like it's just that's why it's not a realistic character. So when you make that a realist when you make the Adams family when you try to translate into realism, you just run into so many problems. Way more questions. Fester was insane, but he was meant to be Gomez without the looks and charm. Yes. The thing about Gomez is that he's a very charming very funny, very uh, joking kind of character and lighthearted. And that's where, that's w how he becomes this beautiful balance with Morticia, who is more the, the, the wise, gentle, yet she's also in charge a little bit. They, they, they form this beautiful thing together. And this Gomez was just like creepy, like a creepy, horny guy. And they made they made him a criminal. Yeah, the Adams family were criminal, so it also looks like they took all the jokes that were that were told in all the all the series or in all the movies that were made about them. It feels like they took them seriously when they were joking about being lady killers. Mm -hmm. There is there are jokes about violence all the time, but we never actually see violence. And it's never violence with the actual consequences of violence. It's Tom and Jerry violence. It's Uncle Fester blows himself up with a rocket and doesn't die. Wednesday and Pugsley, it was always something gruesome, like dropping a box of knives on him, but it would cut away and then show him with knives in a circle around him on the floor. It was Tom and Jerry violence, which is very yeah, different. Yeah, they constantly tried to kill each other, but they never succeeded. They threw a baby off the roof. Do you think you'd be able to do that today? In Adam's family values... They gave their baby a vodka drink and gave him a terrifying teddy bear. Because the baby had a hangover from the wedding the night before. And that was funny. It was funny. Because no one for a second thought that they actually thought that you should give your baby vodka. So the violence that we're exposed to in the Adams family doesn't have the real world consequences of actual violence. Yeah. Which is my first problem with Netflix's Wednesday. Too violent. Way too grotesquely violent and not in a funny way. Not in a Quentin Tarantino kind of way. Just in an extreme violence true crime way. Which doesn't make violence funny anymore. The thing about the Adams family is that you can laugh about morbidity. You can laugh about your mortality because you understand that joking about it is gives you the comic relief of it. Mm -hmm. Keeping it close to you like that makes it more... Um, you can look it in the face. Mm -hmm. You don't have to fear it all the time because it's ine inevitable. Because in a way, it's also your friend because there's nothing you can do about it. So yeah. you live you live your entire life kind of hand in hand with with the, the, the notion of, of dying. Death is life is a joke and death is the punchline. I, I feel that when I watch Adam's family yeah. I see it in the comics. I see it in the in the nineties. I see it in the six even in the sixties. I was there I, there was jokes I laughed at. By joking Gallows about here. death you destroy the fear and taboo on it. Yes, and not showing us extreme examples of violence in a realistic way on a fictional show. It's not like I'm saying, oh, I don't, I don't like violence in my TV shows. I like it when it's part of the thing, when it's, when it needs violence to propel the story, when when it makes sense, when it's adding something to the story, but when it's like kind of senseless, grotesque, way too realistic, like literally like middle schoolers are going to be watching this show. It's like completely desensitizing your reaction to seeing like mm -hmm. torn up corpses. And make it to make them look as real as possible. I just don't see the point. It's weird. It's going to make me have a visceral reaction to my own mortal awareness. Yeah, which is also the problem with, with uh, I think, with a lot of true crime and a lot of shows about serial killers is that we show this violence in the kind of a way that it looks like they're the, they're the superheroes. 
they're the the protagonists mm-hmm. or they're they're cool for being so violent and they got away with it like they look they they're idolized and it feels like Netflix is kind of also falling into that trap where like violence is cool, right? Mm-hmm. That's what the Adams family is also about. Like it's super cool to be violent and like like death, right? So let's introduce Wednesday as a character. Don't get me wrong. I like a good crime scene investigation like any other person. I like I like a good who done it. I like it. It's like a creepy little puzzle mm-hmm. and you and you feel like you're going to get all the answers at the end. Mm-hmm. And this Wednesday was exactly that. It was a who done it. Mm-hmm. But in such a grotesque, out of proportion, way too expensive, over the top, not even good CGI, not even good CGI that they also weren't aware of the fact that that's what they were doing. Like just make a, just make a good who done it. Just make a a good murder mystery. And don't make your main character have visions that reveal the truth, please. That is such a plot hole. If you do that in a murder mystery, plot then it's armor. not a mur- murder mystery anymore. There's no that's supposed to be magic in a murder mystery. No. Cuz then it's not fun anymore to discover who did it. For a murder mystery, I think you'd want to be able to use real world logic since you're trying to determine the murderer. Exactly. If they would have stayed true to her character her original her original character as a as a member of the Adams family she would have been into the monster she would have jokingly liked that there was some some uproar the Adams family loved bad things so to speak in 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 the in the 60s in the first television show about the about the Adams family, Morticia was upset because the school was trying to teach their children that killing a dragon was good. They read a fairy tale, a grim fairy tale, where a dragon was killed, and she was upset because they hurt the poor dragon. Mm-hmm. Wednesday should actually root for the monster. And she wanted to save everyone from the monster. Yeah. She wanted she literally wanted to heal the world. Again. Another show where the main character is just obsessed with making things right and that's just not what it's about. And that's not what the Adams family would do. That's not what Wednesday would do. And also, why would their family send her to a school because she did something wrong at school? They should have liked her doing something wrong at school. She should have come come home to her parents, be like, I I kinda let a piranha eat eat a testicle. And they were like, Good for you, Wednesday. Yeah. That's the thing. It's so serious and it's taking everything seriously within its own world, its own world of reference, that it's not it cannot be symbolic and funny mm-hmm. and absurd. You lose all ability to have fun when you take everything seriously within its own rules, basically. Yeah, they, they, they went for realism. It was like, you have to pick one. Either you have to pick absurdism or you have to pick the, the realism within the story. You, you, cannot, you cannot have both. And that's why the hand being there was kind of weird because we're operating with supernatural things, but like in a real, with real world consequences. Yeah, it, it feels a little bit like they wanted to tell the real story about Wednesday, but this is, you can't tell the real story about Wednesday because Wednesday is an absurd character in in kind of a almost slapstick world. So it's it's like wanting to tell the real story about Bugs Bunny. Like it does it doesn't make sense. I'm going to tell everyone the real story about yes. Bugs Bunny. If you haven't seen Adam's Family and you would just watch that show, then wh- why is why is there a hand? Why does she have a hand that's <laughs> following her like around. Like an emotional hand. And then the hand, okay, I don't know, the hand getting stabbed is where Rose fell off the couch. Yeah, because all of a sudden the hand can also die, and if the real world consequences of stabbing your magical hand are making it a mortal being, then all of a sudden I'm thinking about this hand in a way that you don't want me to think about this hand. Whose hand was it? Uh, where is his heart? 
<laughs> uh, where's his brain? Who did this hand belong to? Is the hand sad that it's just a hand? Is it telekinetic? Do we need to find the hand of the body? Is this hand a slave? Did they kill? Like, all of a sudden I'm having these questions. And you don't want me to think that when you introduce a hand dog pet. Yeah. Just lose the hand. Just lose the hand. You you lost, you, you threw away everything from the Adams family. Everything. You didn't even want to film inside the house because you, you couldn't even, your CGI wouldn't have been good enough. Because <laughs> yeah. it's a silly, silly theater world that we all understand is not the real thing. And that's why it's so beautiful because then we all understand, ah, oh, this is a metaphor. And I don't understand that I'm looking at a mer metaphor when everything is so fucking realistic and still there's mermaids. I don't know what you're telling me. It's just complete escapism yeah. that wants to teach the world a lesson and make everything better. And that's just not how it works. Yeah, and that's why I'm afraid. I'm afraid We're that afraid. poetry is dying. We think that Netflix is killing poetry. Because before Netflix was its selling point was that you could watch cool movies that already existed on Netflix, right? And then after the pandemic and all of these things, it's double downing on its own content. It's trying to make its own content so that you'll watch Netflix over other streaming services. So now they figured out the formula of what makes a successful TV show from all of these uh, from from all the data and the statistics that they've gathered about people's watching histories. It's basically just like a translation of Instagram and Twitter and then just put that together by AI, just put, put it into a plot and just cast the latest influencer for it. Yes. So by doing this, Netflix is kind of making an amalgamation of all of these things, throwing in a little bit of nostalgia for millennials, doing that sort of thing throwing in a, a feminist lead, throwing in a, 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 a complete one, like, two-sided morality, bad versus good. Like a goth Greta Thunberg. S supernatural mermaids, werewolves, vampires, like, cool Gen Z fashion. Because everyone loves Harry Potter. Formulaic, exactly. So Netflix is kind of making its own formula about what not necessarily is not what is good, but what works. What not even what sells because it doesn't even have to sell mm -mm. it just has to anymore. keep you there it just has to keep you there it has to keep you there monthly to keep watching the content that it's making for you it just has to make sure that you're not going to look for different stories it just needs to keep you there because you're there and if you if you have all that to watch then you don't need to you don't need to you don't need to consume different narratives just like disney did before netflix and just like grim did before Disney. So we have ourselves a new institution that serves us our stories. And this is very problematic because if all the stories are the same, then we will we will think that that is how a story is told. But when there's so much at stake, when you're such a big institution, you automatically become too political to take any risks. So they can't they can't be telling stories that are not on a political agenda. So when Wednesday is rewritten, then re they rewrite her in a way that is not just a coincidence that it's completely drained from all its poetry and its irony. It's because irony is dangerous yeah. for credit card, card holders. Irony is dangerous for your sponsors. It will get you canceled. I think Netflix doesn't want a controversial opinion. Because too many people are watching. Too many people are watching. It doesn't fit into the contemporary moral climate. Can you define today's contemporary moral stance? I'm lost on what that might be. Uh, when you have to always say the correct thing. So in the in Wednesday, I feel like there wasn't a single character character who was immoral except for the pilgrim monster who was summoned for some reason easy enemy there are no yeah. more pilgrims no one's gonna disagree with you that that angry pilgrim was a bad guy no one's offended also because no one is a pilgrim no one is offended there is no easy there, there are no pilgrims there are no pilgrims Maybe there's two pilgrims that are like if I had a computer and I knew about it <laughs> yeah like the ultimate racist patriarch daddy was summoned. <laughs> Let's try to get our heads around the Summarize pilgrim. Summarize the pilgrim thing. 
In Wednesday, she sent to school close to Salem, I think. Like, Vermont, I found out, like, halfway through. It's a school for outcasts, which basically means wizards and magical beings. Yeah, the School of Good and Evil, which is another show that is exactly the same thing. And there is also normies, and they really wanted to say muggles, but they, they're they they're saying normies. normies there's normies and, and outcasts. there's outcasts. And they're the outcasts, and there's a school for outcasts to be so different together the same. We're completely the <laughs> same rules as in... It's, it's normie for outcasts. Edgar school. Allan Poe College. Yes. And close to that school, there is Salem. And in Salem, there are still actual pilgrims. Um, Dressing up in Pilgrim Town. Who have lines with pilgrims from the 1600s who used to burn people, I think. Which I think is a comment or a reaction or... A reinvention of the the narrative in the movies from the nineties, yes. where they do a theater play about Thanksgiving, where yeah. Wednesday speaks the truth about what actually happened on Thanksgiving yes. and why it's a very hypocrite thing to celebrate Thanksgiving for one day that a turkey was shared. Well, these Native Americans should have just burned them. Yeah, which is be- a good scene. I think that was a very important yeah. message because it was shocking for people to hear in the 90s Mm -hmm. this other narrative about thanksgiving because it was it's it's countercultural. you're you're not you're supposed to forget about that part and just go with the tradition i mean that's the whole point that's why it's easy to tell them apart from like the normal people that just want to keep their traditions clean and what really happened in history that's like a clear line that the makers of the movie were like yes we really have something to say here and i wished that in Wednesday, they would have come up with something that is an important message now. Like, what do we normies have to hear? So I think they're trying to do that again with this Salem thing. Okay, so these pilgrims burnt witches, and I think that's what she's angry about. Uh, so there's still actual pilgrims in town that she just has beef with. Because they have a pilgrim town where everyone dresses up as pilgrims to to entertain tourists and then Wednesday tells them about fudge in German and then that was like all right Wednesday you tell them about the things that were wrong in the past and I was just like what was that scene Uh, I didn't get that part because it was in 16th century German I don't speak that language and also I wonder why she why she speaks that language yeah. Because she is a person of flesh and blood. Mm-hmm. She's not a 500-year-old vampire. I wonder, where did she get all these skills? Why does she have to be the best at everything? Honestly, if we would meet a person like Wednesday, we would all hate her. Why is everything a school for good and evil? A magical yeah. school where there's vampires and werewolves? Like, why is that a thing that people love? I, th- I think it's escapism. Mm-hmm. We, we don't like this world. We don't really like it here, so we also we always need a, a portal in our shows to another world, or we need reality to be completely different. Yeah. But it's also it's not it's not uh, science fiction or it's not fantasy because in good fantasy you're always very very uh, aware of the fact that you're are sucked into a metaphor with a world that has its own rules, but you're you're very aware of the fact, ah, this world doesn't really exist. Mm-hmm. I can escape into this world. That's the premise. It seems like they want to make that fake world look like the real world. Yeah. And I have a problem with that. Because the world isn't like that. The person who played Wednesday in the 90s movie, yeah. Christina Ricci, she was her teacher in ho- the magic school of Hogwarts. And that's that's... Just completely destroys my suspense of disbelief because when I'm watching Wednesday as not Wednesday but someone else, then also I'm thinking about how she was casted for that role as not Wednesday and I'm looking at two Wednesdays so it becomes intertextual and then it also becomes... What did the actress think about her role? Mm -hmm. And then I'm thinking about another dimension, which you don't want me to think about because you want me to get sucked into the story. Yeah. And that just doesn't happen when you make me aware of a choice the director made. 
She needed to collect people's organs. Yeah, she ha okay. So she's a crazy plant lady mm -hmm. who knows a lot about science. Like, even though this is like a supernatural thing, she's just like science plant lady. Yeah. And she has a formula that she injects into a barista that she flirts with. <laughs> To turn child. him into a hide, which is whatever. It's a werewolf, okay? It's a hide. It's a weird Sonic the Hedgehog with mange werewolf. In in Adam's family, the monster, it's not all these scary things. Yeah. It's not the witch in the kitchen. It's not the 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 rug of the bear attacking you. It's society. Us. We are the monster. And this is a stupid ass Sonic the Hedgehog with mange. It wasn't even human. She injects him with that, tells him who or lets him kill whatever to harvest organs from the corpse in order to do like a sort of Frankenstein thing at the end with like with j glass jars of, of body parts that need Wednesday Adams pilgrim blood because she came from a Spanish family the last but what also they were telling German us. German but pilgrim. also she's now a German pilgrim in a past life with blonde hair who is her ancestor she needs the blood wiped on a statue in order to call down a racist pilgrim to come back to life for 10 minutes who is definitely a wizard which is supposed to be persecuting witches but it's like a full-blown wizard and he is alive for 10 minutes to burn the the playground of the school which <laughs> the plant lady could have done herself honestly that's 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 the plot line also the transformation that the character makes with oh, oh my god yeah. hello neuromantic like, with everything happening, she goes from being someone who's very cold and isolated and wants to be alone to, in the end, being able to receive a hug from someone. That's, <laughs> that's, that's her emotional tra trans transition. That's everything that happens to her. And then we needed all of that. We needed Pilgrim Summit. We needed mermaid battles. We needed... She needed to be sent to a normie school for special werewolves. She needed to have a barista lover. She needed to find a, a, an artist in the woods who can only paint golems heights. Under a very poor lighting. She needed to make a bee nerd friend in Adam's family, family values. She also made a nerd friend at camp who was also the outsider, the mm -hmm. outcast, mm -hmm. because he was such a nerd. That became her boyfriend because she recognized his, how he was rejected and she also felt that in herself and that's what bonded them. In this show, she didn't rec recognize any of that. Mm -mm. She was, ill nerd, I'm a special one for loving him. <laughs> ill puke nerd. Doesn't make sense. Like I'm, I'm losing track of who the normies are in that world they're creating. Yes. Are her parents the normies? Is the Adams family the normies? Is she rebelling against what her family stands for by being the same thing i i don't know i'm i'm just i'm just lost on on what story is told this the wednesday movie is made by normies i feel like normies saw on instagram that being goth is cool now and they were like you know what what's a what's a what's a goth icon let's take wednesday because teenagers are cool now we all saw that in stranger things mm -hmm. you have to make a show about teenagers and make them look dark so let's take wednesday but then completely lose wednesday also we just want her to look like wednesday because then people are going to watch it because everyone knows the adams family and then they didn't care about the adams family they just wanted to make something that's going to make a lot of money so the normies made something that was supposed to be about not being a normie. And then in this magic school they created, <laughs> where she went to... Harry Potter magic school. They're talking about normies, but it's not clear who the normies are. Are the normies pilgrims? Are the normies werewolves? Are the, no are the normies artists in a shed who are drawing golems because they just can't help themselves? Are the normies the psychologists? Normies? And there's one barista, and then you're like, ah, that's the normie. But then he turns out to be a vicious werewolf, so he's not a normie anymore. It's, it's I'm, I'm, 
Who are the normies? Because last time I checked, the the, the entire school looks like Instagram f influencers. Like everyone <laughs> yeah. in that school is just like a Gen Z influencer. And they're, they're calling themselves outcasts. But I don't think an Instagram influencer, which they they say also they talk about their followers on social media are outcasts i just i just don't buy that if you're a super hot mermaid with 20 mermaid. 20k followers on instagram you're not an outcast no were there any legitimate good or funny moments honestly no, no. if i put myself in the um, target audience and I think target audience is 16 year olds. Yeah. 15, like people. Which is problematic with all the violence. I don't, I don't really know what the target audience is, but if True it's. True crime moms? If it's teenagers, then I think the good jokes or the fun moments are in the dance, for example. I like think the it's goth just dance. moments that can survive on social media picked out from the movie. Like now you can just. You can just uh, duet a uh, part with, with her in it. Like, you can just reenact her dance on TikTok. You can pick out things from the series now to push through and social media to become Wednesday, to, to look and yeah. to steal the fashion of Wednesday, to become cool yourself, which is why it's such a normie move, because goth yeah. is cool now. Yeah, or I think also the moments where, where she has monologues about doing the right thing yeah. or justice or where she re has she puts the older generations in, her pla in their place. Mm -hmm. I think those are the moments for the target audience to, to, to really enjoy, which were the moments that I hated the most <laughs> <laughs> because it doesn't feel sincere. Yeah, Wednesday, a series of shareable clips, exactly. Yeah. Built for clips, memes, gifts, sharing generally so that more people watch. It's a movie you can shop. Exactly. Yeah. It's a so shoppable it's, movie. It's, the, it's the, the ultimate capitalist production. They didn't have quality on their minds. I think they just had certain targets, like it needs to, this needs to be in it. We need to spend this much money on CGI. We need to have this actress in there, and then it needs to be this many. They, it feels like they had all sorts of quotas that the, they needed. Yeah, and the plot line was garbage. Just making her some sort of like cunty goth detective that everyone hates. And we would all hate that girl. Yeah, but somehow on social media, it looks like everyone wants to be Wednesday now. Yeah, that's true. And I honestly don't understand why. What it? What is it about her personality that you want to have? You want to be an asocial, isolated bitch who is unable to show affection or receive it? Yeah. What's cool about that? What is cool about that? I don't understand. She's trying to be like a a fringe, a fringe goth. But everyone hero. loves her. But she, everyone she's, loves her. Every. She doesn't encounter any friction. The only friction she encounters is all the way at the end when people are like, you're a bitch. And then one scene later, they don't feel that way anymore. Yeah. Oh, I love the part when they give her a birthday in the tomb. Oh, and yeah. then she's like, her oh, my God, you gave me a surprise birthday party. They have candles for her on a birthday cake. And she just like turns around, ignores the birthday cake and just starts reading Latin on a tomb. Like, what a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Would you hang out with that person? No. She also left her handmade birthday present in the coffee shop. Total what a cunt. Bitch. Exhausting. What's your problem, Wednesday? Like on my on my worst days, I think I'm afraid to be like her. Oh my god. I think I think she is she's she's my my nightmare. She is she is what I never want to become. She's and, a total sourpuss. Yeah. She is she's she is what I sometimes fear that people see me as. I never want to be like that. That's why I don't understand why people on social media are like, "Oh my god, I love Wednesday. I want to be Wednesday." I'm like, Wednesday what? now. Really? Wednesday is a very very lonely person. Very problematic. Wednesday doesn't enjoy anything. She says she enjoys death. Not but even that. She doesn't. She wants to make the world right. 
And she still has very, very hardcore moral beliefs about right and wrong. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's, she's not liberated from that at all. And there is this point, also another point where Rose fell off her chair when they try to show uh, in, in the tomb that this guy took Wednesday out for a, a, a date with a lot of, like, lights and goth popcorn. Um, he showed her the movie Legally Blonde. As, like, a funny joke that, haha, I'm gonna make you watch a normie movie. A normie movie and for a good her, time. And she was like, oh, why are you showing me Legally Blonde? It was supposed to be, like, funny. Of course, Wednesday's not gonna watch Legally Blonde. But Legally Blonde is actually a movie about a woman who... Society expected nothing of because of the way she looked, and she proved everyone wrong. It's a movie about a woman who proves the world that you're not supposed to judge people by their looks mm -hmm. because she turned out to be a very smart and successful lawyer, and people... Which is basically what the Adams Family also stood for. So by referencing that movie in their own Adams Family spin-off, they show to me that they have absolutely no idea where they're coming from, and it makes me furious. They're the normies. They're the normies who are not willing to look further than someone's Instagram fucking account. The people who made that don't care about the Adams Family. They don't care about making a good thing. I wonder what they do care about. What does Tim Burton care about? He made beautiful things. Beautiful things. Yeah. Beautiful goth things. You would think that he, of all people, would understand exactly what the Adams Family is about. And he took a big dump on it. <laughs> and that's offensive for someone who really finds beauty and who, who who feels recognized into a, com a comedic show about mortality and a goth family who's very warm and friendly because there is all these stigmas around goth cu culture like a goth kids i'm sure everyone who's a goth kid has been bullied about, oh, do you worship Satan? Are you gonna kill yourself? Why are you always so sad? You're always unhappy. And those are the insults that Netflix is throwing at their own goth character. And that makes me super angry because they are supposed to open up the world to this point of view and they're closing it back down. Yeah, I'm offended. My, my culture is being um, take another culture. Appropriate it. Appropriate. Golf culture is being appropriated with by Wednesday Netflix. by Netflix. I am yelling at you. <laughs> Bobby's <doing it. laughs> I feel now a little bit insulted as being the girl who never liked anything or being the girl who who's like people just didn't get. And because when I was growing up, I was always the one who was like, oh, you're never smiling. Why don't you like it? Well, come on, just be happy. Just do the thing everyone's doing. Just fit in. Don't think too much. You're overthinking. And and I, I want, as a teenager, I would want to find a show that was liberating. Yeah, because somehow this character Wednesday, for people who are a little bit like her or people who are afraid that they are a little bit like her, it's not empowering at all. Like, I don't... I only see the thing that I'm afraid of being or yeah. just all over again, like, oh, that's, that's what, that's what it must have looked like in the bad, mm -hmm. the, in the bad way. That's how everyone must have seen me. Yeah. Looking like a sour puss that's negative all the time and, and is just mad about everything and doesn't like anything. And then seeing her being received as kind of a new role, role model for all the bad things that you said about yourself. It hits weird. It's a, it's weird. It makes me rage a little bit. Yeah. Because the thing that did make me feel better was like a show like The Addams Family in the 90s. A show that was telling you it was okay to be yourself, even though you're a little bit different. You could still be a good person and be different, and that was okay, and people will love you for being that way. 
So are you saying by making this new one, they ruined the old one? No, I'm saying that they didn't take anything about what makes the old ones great and, and nice and funny and absurd. They ruined it a little bit because this is going to be the, the newest version. Yeah. This is going to be the Adam's family in the minds yeah. of the new people. This is going to be the, the story from a goth icon that is told today. Yeah. So in a way, they ruined it a little bit. Just like Twilight ruined what a vampire is a little bit. Yeah, uh, it's gonna warp it's the gonna lore. It's gonna warp the lore. Watch, watch Wednesday. Watch it. But don't forget where she came from. Don't turn off your critical perspective when you watch it. Netflix Wednesday is not an Adams. Wednesday is not Wednesday. She's Thursday. She's Thursday. Absolutely. She came after. Because okay. the, the, what's the quote? We gladly feast on those who subdue us. And the Adams family has been subdued by Netflix. So we should gladly feast on them. See this? I'm gonna feast on it. Nice, nice.